So good evening from Bangkok. Welcome to the seventh webinar organized by AIGS. I'm Michelle. Hope you are very well all the time. So um, today I got the news like the Thailand department stores is going to reopen on 17 May. So as a female, I'm so happy because finally I can go shopping and buy myself a pair of contact lens to make myself look nicer in front of the video. But it's okay. Um, it's, I'm not a main character because I have two big men behind me. They are AIGS chairman, Mr. Kennedy Ho, and uh, JGGL uh, director, Mr. Masaki Fruya. Today, the whole flow is, uh, of the webinar is going to change a bit because um, Mr. Fruya, he like to give the test before the presentation. He want to have an idea of how much you know about the mentoid. Then he will start his presentation and he will share more with you in the presentation. And also he will give you the answer of the quiz in the presentation. So after the presentation will be the last session of the question and answer session. So he will select some questions to answer. And uh, don't worry about you miss some parts of the webinar because we will always post the videos in the AIJS website, uh, Facebook and the YouTube channel. And uh, for Chinese attendees, we will post it in Weibo and uh, also Tencent video. So you can catch up later. So now I'll give the stage to AIJS chairman, Mr. Kennedy Ho. He will give the brief introduction to our distinguished guest speaker, Mr. Masaki Fruya. So welcome, Kun Kennedy. You can hear me, right? Yes. yes. Okay, so let's start. So what do you have? Welcome back to uh, AIGS Gem Tips. This is our seventh webinar. Our speaker today is speaking from Japan, from a city called Hofu. For all of you who are not familiar with Japan, Hofu is the gems and jewelry hub in Japan. All the manufacturers are there, many of the stone cutters, many of the dealers are in Kofu. Uh, Mr. Furuya runs a gemological laboratory in Kofu. It's called JGGL, and it stands for Japan Germany Gemological Laboratory. Some of you might be wondering why it's Japan and Germany. Well, the company was started by Mr. Furuya's father, also another distinguished gemologist. Uh, his name was Masashi Furuya. In the early 60s, they spent a lot of time in Ida Oberstein. You know, in the 60s, there were not many Asian people, I mean, especially Japanese, living in Ida Oberstein. So that's where the name Japan, Germany, uh, Gemological Laboratory came from. Let me give you a little bit of history. During the 60s, Ida Oberstein was the, the gem center of the world. Okay. All the best cutting, all the best uh, carvings was all produced in Ida Oberstein. In Thailand in the 60s, the gems and jewelry industry was tiny. It was almost very, very few manufacturers. And Early 60s was when Burma was just closing the country. That means nobody in, nobody out. It's almost like COVID-19 uh, uh, situation right now. Uh, other countries in Asia, in China, nobody would even think about jewelry at that time, 60 years ago. So anyway, let, let me not waste too much time on history. Let me give the floor to uh, Mr. Furia. He's going to be talking about dementoid garnets. Um, like Michelle said just now, uh, many countries in the world are starting to open up, but everybody, I think, is uh, cautious, okay? 
uh, keep the social distancing because we don't know exactly what's going to happen when things open up. In Thailand, we're opening up very, very slowly. And um, like the departments will start opening up uh, two days from now. So anyway, uh, enjoy the talk from Mr. Surya, uh, Furia, okay? And so I pick up. So let me invite uh, Mr. Matt Furia to turn <coughs> on the video. Hello, Mr. Furia, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. You are turned Thank now? you very much. Uh, yeah. Okay, so thank you very much, Mr. Ho, for the nice introduction of me. And uh, my name is Masaki Furuya. I'm a director of the Japan Germany Gemological Laboratory. And uh, now I'm in our collection room of our laboratory. And on this side, uh, it's too small. Uh, we have a mineral collection like this. This is a crystal of demantoid. And on this side, yeah, we have a cut stone nephilim sample. It's like this. Yes. So today, uh, I would like to talk about uh, demantoid garnet and uh, its whole scale inclusion. And uh, uh, today, I want to share what I know about demantoid. And uh, that is why I like the demantoid garnet, uh, especially. And uh, as uh, Mr. Ho kindly introduced about my father, my father also loved this gemstone and he wrote this uh, book about the demantoid. And uh, so today, after my session, if you got uh, interested in the demantoid garnet a little bit more than before, that is my goal. For today. Okay, so before my presentation, uh, Michelle, can you start the polling? Okay, of course, yeah. So today will be a bit different from um, previous time, so we will try to launch the polling first. So everyone, please uh, answer the questions before Mr. Fruya give the presentation. So maybe uh, Mr. Fruya, during the um, present during the polling session, you can have some talk with the uh, attendees. You can share them some information. You want to talk to them? Ah uh, yes. Okay. Oops. Yeah. First, let me talk about the little logistic things. My talk will be uh, less than an hour. It's a little bit long because I'm sorry for my bad English. Let me speak a little bit more than other people. And uh, also, what else? Uh, I, Demantoid garnet is uh, not, uh, how can I say, a uh, major stone like a ruby, sapphire, you know, but uh, uh, actually it has a very interesting background. Like, uh, as I want to introduce, the history is, re is really interesting. The color is really beautiful. And also the inclusion is, uh, it's really beautiful. So uh, anyway, in my presentation, I hope you get more interested in uh, Demantoid Garnet. And uh, yeah, if uh, so, it would be very nice for me. And so Ms. Um, Ruya? Uh, yes. Can you adjust your headphone a bit? Maybe some attendees, they cannot hear you clearly. Oh, really? Yeah, so you, maybe you can adjust a bit, yeah. Yes. Okay. It's okay, yeah. Is it clear now? So, I think now for me it's okay. What about other attendees? I'm not sure. I think it's okay, right? Yeah. I hope so. Yes, because it's... I can hear you clearly, yeah. Yeah, thank you. And, uh... If my voice is not clear, please tell me. Yeah, I will remind you, don't worry about it. So yeah, yeah enjoy your presentation. Yeah, I think now is, uh, I will try to end the poll. And uh, do you want to, sh to only to share the result now? Oh, uh, no, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, 
yeah, I, I think it maybe later is okay. Okay, yeah. I, I will share later, okay? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so we can continue. Yes, and uh, now can everybody see the presentation? Yes, we can see it. Yeah, okay, so let me start it. Okay, in today's session, first we will review the demon point as a member of Garnet, and also introduce the dramatic history of it. And after that, I would like to show two mines as two different type of formation. One is Russian mine, and uh, we see the hostile inclusion of it, and also hostile inclusion from other origins. The other one is uh, Namibian mine. And later, let me talk a little bit about uh, the thermal enhancement heating and also some analytical data as the feature of some origins. Okay, let me start it. Okay, the name of garnet. It comes from the Latin word granatus, meaning seed-like. Uh, like these photos, the clusters of garnet crystal looks like a seeds of uh, pomegranate. The gar demantoid garnet also comes like this. And the garnet has, uh, has been a very good friend of us since long time ago, ancient time. The garnet was described in the Old Testament as one of the 12 gemstones which should be put on the priestly breastplate. At the time, garnet was called as a carbuncle, but the carbuncle is red garnet, so the green garnet, like demantoid, is relatively new. And uh, originally, the garnet is a group of mineral. Its chemical formula is uh, expressed as uh, X3, Y2, and uh, silicate. X site can be 2 plus. Uh, metal ion, like uh, magnesium, iron, manganese, calcium. And the uh, Y side can be 3 plus metal ion, like uh, aluminum, chromium, iron. And uh, these are six uh, end members of the combination of these X and Y. And uh, it is like this. Upper three of pyrop, almandine, and the spessart like garnet are mostly the lead, and uh, they can be mixed often. The lower three of uh, ubalobite, glossia, andradite garnet are mainly green. They also can be mixed sometimes. And uh, this mixture is called solid solution and the mixed one became a different variety of garnet. Because of many end members and the complex mixture of them, we have a lot of colors of garnet, except blue. Yeah, unless we call the color change garnet is blue. But, and uh, this time we focus on the andradite garnet and uh, especially its green variety of demandoid. Here is the property of andradite garnet. Its chemical composition is uh, calcium, iron, and silicate. It has a variety name for some colors. Like green one is a demandoid garnet, yellow one is a topazolite, brown one is a polyagelphite, and some uh, not famous others. The hardness of andradite garnet is six and a half. It is not super hard as sapphire, but almost same as quartz. So it is not bad. And uh, it's dispersion. Fire is quite strong as uh, 0 0.057. And the reflective index is quite high as 1.8. Seven five, so we can have uh, we can enjoy the good luster from andradite. And let's move to the history of demantoid. 
It has a very dramatic history, and my father described it as the gemstone aroused from a century of sleep. Let's see it. Originally, Lemantoid was discovered in 1853 at the central part of Ural, Russia. Many Russian emperors loved it, loved it, especially the Karl Fabergé, the Russian royal jeweler, made a wonderful collection of jewelries and objects using the Russian Lemantoid. Here is one example of uh, Karl Fabergé's uh, imperial Easter egg. It's using the demantoid uh, as the center of the flower. And it is all made of precious metal and gemstone. And also it was loved by British king. Edward VII had the great collections of jewelries using demantoid in it. It is uh, popular in the United States also. Tiffany, especially the Dr. Kuntz, the vice president at the time, made a great collection with the demandoid. Uh, this one is, uh, this is uh, one of the Tiffany's collection at the time. And the opposite side, there is a watch. And uh, on this side, a lot of demandoid is set as melee, uh, as puppet. Okay, uh, so we can see that the Demantoid was very popular in the worldwide gemstone market around uh, 1900. However, when the Russian Revolution happened in 1917, the dealing gemstone was prohibited in Russia. So the Demantoid garnet disappeared from the market. Oh. You okay? And uh, these are the photo of uh, Marishevo Emerald and Alexandrite mine in uh, 2012. Still showing some heritage of uh, communist time. And at that time, Emerald was mined for taking beryllium in it, especially the beryllium is uh, important for the military purpose. So, uh, like the left photo, the low quality bell is, uh, of course it is crushed, and even the good quality emerald, it is sometimes crushed to take the beryllium out of it. However, after the dissolution of Soviet Union in 1991, leading gemstone was released. And in 2012, they got the financial support from uh, US company and Russian company. And finally, the one of the important mine was reopened. And uh, that is why my father described Demantoid as a gemstone aroused from almost a century of sleep. So the answer of the polling Demantoid garnet is newly found stone in 1990s. Uh, this is wrong. Okay, let's see the locality and its formation. Now we have many origins, not only the Russia. These are the localities now. Uh, Demantoid garnet is found in many countries. So the next answer of the polling. Demantoid garnet comes from only Russia. This is wrong. And these localities can be categorized into two types of formation. The red ones are related to the serpentine, and the blue ones are related to Stalin. I would like to explain the mine of Russia and Namibia, where I could visit before. First, the Russian mine. I could have a chance to visit there in 2012, thanks to these people here, and especially Dr. Yuri. And uh, he liked my excitement at the mine, and since then, he started to organize a tour to the Ural mine almost every year. And maybe this year is uh, difficult, but uh, next year, if you are interested in it, please send me an email. I will forward it to him. 
Okay, anyway, the Demantoid Garnet uh, we visited was the Corpodino Mine. It is uh, located uh, 65 kilometers south of Ekaterinburg. This area has a long history of mining platinum and gold. Also, at the 50 kilometers east of Ekaterinburg, there is a world's biggest asbestos mine. And asbestos is uh, important in Demantoid. The mine is located in the deep green conifer forest. It looks like a uh, green of demantoid garnet. And uh, it is an open pit mine. And uh, this is a mining site. We see a lot of uh, holes uh, here. Yeah, these veins are bended and folded so much. Because of it, the different layers are located next to each other. And the demantoid veins are found at the border of these layers. The demantoid garnet is found like this, always associated with uh, black ultramafic block and uh, white serpentine. Ultramafic block is a uh, igneous block with a dark color due to the high magnesium, iron, and also some chromium content. And the uh, serpentine is a fibrous rock of a lot of silicate. And the uh, demantoid can be formed between these two. As calcium, iron, chromium are from uh, ultramafic rock, and the silicate is from uh, serpentine. And also, this uh, fibrous serpentine can be a whole scale inclusion if it is included. But sometimes, I see the demantoid is totally covered with hard host rock. So I had to crush it at the site. But they have a better system to take it out. This, this is a system of electric crusher to take the demantoid out. Uh, like this, we hear the noise of the electric blast. The super high voltage electricity flushed the, the gemmo. The mechanism is like this. We put the gemmo, demantoid granite, and the host rock in the electrolyte solution. And we have the electric blast. Then the electricity goes through the border of crystal and host rock. Then it separates them so nicely. After that, we clean it and we can pick them up yeah, like this and uh, we can see some green demantoid here we saw the lotion mine just now but uh, the other origins like uh, iran canada pakistan us italy and turkey are all related to serpentine like lotion one so all of them can have the wholesale inclusion. Actually, many people think uh, if the stone had a wholesale inclusion, it's from Russia. But actually, I want to change that image. Now, it is a main topic today. Let's see the wholesale inclusion. Especially the Russian ones are really beautiful. Let's start with the uh, Russian demantoid. The Russian wholesale inclusion is mostly very clear and easy to see. Its uh, radial shape is uh, just like a hostel. Hostel inclusion is a chrysotile, a variety of serpentine. The lotion ones are often very long and sometimes fine and sometimes bold, but always very clear. And it is because they don't have other inclusion so much, only the host inclusion. Sometimes uh, we see the different material at the core of uh, host inclusion. This one. Yeah, the black crystal at the core is a chromite. It's a chromium spinel. And sometimes Russian hostel has uh, this kind of uh, swirly center 
And uh, about this type of core, I would like to share a wonderful picture of it. This one. This photo is taken by Mr. Lucas Fasali. He's a professional photographer specialized in the gemstone inclusion. He took some hours from the Smithsonian Institute with his uh, demantoid photo. It looks like a big ban in the gemstone. When I saw him in Tokyo, uh, he exhibited there. He kindly gave us a lot of advice for taking photo. And also, he kindly gave us a panel of this photo. And uh, we have it at our lab's entrance now. And uh, thank him very much again. And anyway, the wholesale inclusion in the uh, lotion one is uh, often very long and fair and sometimes beautiful. Also, sometimes we can see these uh, needle-shaped inclusion, inclusion in uh, lotion demandoid. Uh, this is, uh, these are tolemolite inclusion. It is not common, but sometimes we can see. And uh, let me move let me move to other origins. This is the uh, Iranian demandoid. And again, many people think the hostile inclusion is only in the Russian demandoid, but as uh, we see now, other localities also have it. But compared to the Russian one, the hostile inclusion in Iranian material is uh, mostly very short. And uh, it has other inclusion also. Uh, here we can see the liquid inclusion in it. And then this is also Iranian. The hostel here is a little bit short and not even. And also it has a, a lot of liquid inclusion, uh, not only the hostel inclusion. And the most Iranian hostel inclusion is very short like this. And also, Iranian demandoid often has a distinct color zoning like this. Uh, this type of color zoning. That is why some people cut it as a slice uh, like this. And then we can enjoy its layer of colors. About the Iranian demandoid, short hostel and the color zoning are the features of it. The next one is uh, from Quebec, Canada. Their hostel inclusion is also short and not many as, uh, not much as the Russian one. Also, I, we can see the straight, uh, like a straight or angular growth structure often in a Canadian demandoid. In Canadian demandoid, Hostel is uh, not many, and sometimes uh, it's not clear, and it's sometimes it's difficult to see like this. And here is also some short hostel inclusion, but it's not clear, like the lotion ones. Okay, the feature of the Canadian stone is uh, short and not clear hostel and a strong growth structure. Okay, next one is uh, Pakistan. They also have very fine, hairy hostel inclusion like this. But as we see, they also have a lot of other inclusions. The black crystal inclusions here is uh, magnetite and uh, they have a lot of uh, liquid inclusions. The Pakistani hostel is very fine and uh, they have a hairy shape. But also we see a lot of other inclusion in it, like a uh, liquid inclusion here. And also Pakistani stone has a swelly close structure like this. And this is due to their strong distortion. Here is also another sample of a strong distortion. And uh, when we see this stone under the closed polarized filter, it shows a uh, very strong iridescence like this. 
So the features of the Pakistani demantoid is a fine and hairy wholesale, and also they have many other inclusions and strong distortion. Okay, from now, these are the rare origins. This, is, uh, this one is from Italy. They have uh, a very fine and clear wholesale inclusion, and then not much other inclusions. Yes. And actually, hostel inclusions of Italy one is very similar to the Russian one. But when we look at the body color, it's all, mostly it's very pale. And here is a hostel inclusion in the demantoid from the United States. It is from Diablo Mine, California. And uh, we can see a very fine and nice hostel inclusion in it. And sometimes a uh, hostel inclusion in the United States stone, US stone, is very wavy like this. And uh, this one is also very wavy. And we can see the color zoning often in the US demantoid. And uh, this is. Uh, this one is exceptionally strong, but uh, we can see this kind of color zoning in the US demandoid. And the last one is from Taki. Their hostel inclusion is uh, quite little. It's a little bit difficult to find, but uh, these are the hostel inclusion. But uh, it has a lot of other inclusions. And uh, in this photo, these can be a whole, uh, where is it? Uh, these can be the wholesale inclusion, but other inclusions, like the liquid inclusions, are so many. So the feature of Turkish demodoid is uh, a lot of liquid inclusion. Okay. And the answer of the polling, the hostel inclusion can be seen only in Russian demantoid garnet. This is wrong. OK, let me summarize a little bit. Uh, maybe it is important to separate the Russian material from others. The Russian hostel is uh, very long and clear. The Iranian one is short, and uh, the stone has a color zoning sometimes. And the Canadian one has a uh, liquid inclusion also and a strong growth structure. The Pakistani has uh, more liquid inclusion and a strong distortion. For the layer source, US has a fine and wavy wholesale and zoning. And Italy has a clear wholesale, but its body color is pale. And uh, Turkish has uh, more other inclusion than hostel inclusion. So I hope you see that many origins demandoid have a hostel inclusion, not only the Russian one, and they look a little bit different. Okay, let me add a little bit more about the hostel inclusion. Is there hostel inclusion seen only in demandoid? Yeah, please check this one. This is a specified garnet from Tanzania, but uh, it shows a wholesale like inclusion in it. But actually, this is not a wholesale, this is a dissolved dislocation. What is a dissolved dislocation? During the crystal glows, small distortion causes a gap, the empty space at the glowing point of the crystal and it continues to outside as the crystal grows. And finally, it forms a hollow tube. And uh, that is the dissolved dislocation. And uh, this photo is a topaz of uh, limonite inclusion. But this limonite is a kind of contamination which entered to the dissolved dislocation after the post-crystal growth. And it looks like a needle inclusion, but actually it is a hollow tube. So, and this is also the dissolved dislocation in specified. 
but uh, it really looks like a wholesale inclusion. And uh, yeah, this is uh, other sample in the uh, grocery garnet from Dodoma, Tanzania. This also looks like a straight type uh, wholesale inclusion, but again, this is a dissolved dislocation. Okay, so the answer of the polling, wholesale inclusion is seen only in the Mandrik garnet, not in other garnet. This is true. Okay, let's see the formation of the skullen related demandoid, Namibian demandoid. This, uh, I want to introduce the green dragon mine. This uh, green dragon mine is in Namibia. It is located 100 kilometers west of its capital, Windhoek. The mine is located between two high mountains, uh, Mount Spitzkopf and uh, Mount Elongo. I could visit this mine thanks to this gentleman, Mr. Stefan Leif. What was uh, impressive for me was their ethical mining. They made a water well for the locals because they are very good at the digging and uh, their camp is zero emission. For example, they take all trash from the camp to the uh, garbage disposable facility in a big city and uh, they have the solar generator and uh, even the security dog uh, took a vaccination. And uh, even the thief comes into the, the, the property, even the security dog bite him, still they are safe for the uh, bad disease. Okay, uh, actually there is no one to check it, but uh, they have this kind of really ethical operation there. It was very impressive for me. Okay, and uh, here is a gland of the skullen, the white soil. And the demand toy is found uh, along, along this dark layer of the lyolite. We can find two types of crystal there because they had a twice of crystallization in their history. The first formation occurred at the 600 to 500 million years ago when the granite intruded the surface calcus. Uh, Calcaceous clay. And this type of crystal are mostly small and they're not transparent. When we see the uh, matrix consists of uh, lyolite, uh, including calcium, silicate, and iron, and some marble, it's a pure calcium carbonate, and the calcicate of the calcium and silicate. So in this mine, there is no chromium source. And the second formation is a relatively new as 120 to 90 million years ago when the Mount Elongo and the Spitzkopf was formed. Their volcanic activity, heat and moving, uh, gave the second chance for the crystallization. At this time, the crystal can glow in the pocket with water. So the crystal shape transparency is good like this. But still, there is no chromium source for them. Because their chromium content is low, the green color of Namibian demantoid is not strong. However, as we can see in this video, their fire is quite strong. As we saw at the beginning, the dispersion of the uh, andradite garnet is very strong as 0.057, even higher than diamond 0.044 stepwise. So the answer of pouring fire of diamond garnet is strong as the diamond, this is true. But why we don't see such fire so much in the deep green demantoid like a Russian or Italian material? 
It is because the chromium in deep green demantoid absorbs the red light and even the blue light. But in Namibian demantoid, the, because uh, the chromium content is quite low, this absorption is not so strong. So in the stone, despite the red, yellow, or blue light can, is not absorbed in the stone, and we can see it as a beautiful fire. Madagascar is also the same type of origin. So they don't have much chromium in it, and the color is weak, but their fire is strong. Okay, let's see some inclusions. Because their formation is not related to serpentine, they don't have a hostile inclusion in it. The mostly they have some liquid inclusion and a crystal aggregate inclusion of uh, diopside. Uh, this is a uh, diopside aggregate inclusion. And this is uh, also the liquid inclusion in Namibian demantoid. And uh, this is uh, crystal aggregate, but we can see the straight close line behind it also. Here is a straight and a swirly growth structure. Madagascar stone has the same type of inclusion as a crystal aggregate and a liquid inclusion. And unfortunately, there are also some treatment on demandoid. And mostly it is done on the Russian one. It was reported in 2014 by Russian researcher reducing heating, uh, heating without uh, oxygen, can change the color of demantoid to green like this. And uh, it is a reversible reaction. If it is heated, under the oxidizing condition, uh, heating with the uh, oxide, then it go back to the brown color. This type of heating can be done on mostly Russian material, but Iranian material also can change the color. We tried it for the pale Pakistani material, but it didn't change. It may be related to the ionized state of iron, but it may require something else like a chromium content for the changing color, and uh, which is not apparent in a Pakistani material. But actually, we don't know. And uh, in this heating experiment, the FTIL spectra changed as reported in the previous research. The absorption related to the chrysotile here, it's a uh, 3,690 cm-1, uh, this absorption is disappeared uh, after the heating. However, we noticed some natural ones have the same spectra as the heated one. And we could check the antique demantoid of 1880s, thanks to the antique jewelers of Albion, Albion Art Company in Japan. And we found that its FTIL spectrum is also the same as heated one. So there are some natural unheated uh, demantoid that already have the heated like FTIL spectra. That's why, unfortunately, we cannot identify a heating just by FTIL spectrum. But if the demantoid is battery heated, the host tail inclusion is damaged. It's a bit, it's a big pity that the beautiful host tail inclusion is broken. Here we can see the tension clock uh, on the host tail inclusion. And here is also a toll like inclusion. And here is another tension clock. And this one is a really pity. This stone was big as over the two carat size, and the hostile inclusion was very clear and beautiful. 
but we see the big tension crack at the center of the host air inclusion. And this is also the same stone from the different angle. So if the stone is badly heated, the hostel inclusion is damaged, we can tell it is heated for sure. But if the stone is not badly heated, so the hostel inclusion is still clear and uh, if the FTIR spectrum is uh, not like an unheated one, then we cannot say anything about the heating. And actually in our laboratory, most of the stone demantoid, like uh, I would say 70 to 80% of lotion demantoid are uh, like this kind of stone. I mean, the, it's impossible to detect the heating. They don't have uh, any damaged inclusion and the FTIR spectra is uh, like a heated sample in our experiment. Okay, also let me add some analytical data about uh, demantoid origins. First, in order to separate the uh, serpentine related and the uh, scallion related origins, FTIR shows a clear difference. The serpentine related uh, origin uh, stone shows a strong absorption around uh, 3,600 3, CM minus one. This is because of the serpentine. And so we can easily separate uh, these two types. Uh, the, like a blue one is from Russia because it has a serpentine absorption and the green one is from Madagascar. It doesn't have a serpentine absorption. And, uh, but UV visible spectra is almost same for all serpentine uh, related origins. In this chart, only the Pakistani spectra, the black one, shows uh, different peaks, but it is because of the low chromium content. We checked some Russian material with the low chromium content. Unfortunately, they ha also have this kind of uh, spectra. So the UV visible doesn't help so much. And the problem is the uh, chromium content. These are all from Russia. And uh, when we look at, the, look at the chromium content of them, it really varies from stone to stone. Some of them are, they don't have a chromium content and uh, the highest one has a 2% of uh, very high chromium content in it. And when we look at the chromium content for other origins, actually it highly depends on the stone and uh, not on the origins. High chromium content can be seen in uh, Iran, like this one, 1.3%. And uh, Turkish, this is 1.1%. Uh, and uh, this one is amazing. The Diablo mine, this one is, uh, it has a three percentage of chromium in it. It was really dark. And moreover, if we see the chromium content in Namibian and uh, Madagascar material, it is almost zero. So the answer of the polling, andradite garnet with chromium content is a uh, demantoid garnet. This is unfortunately no. Even the stone doesn't have the chromium content, but if the stone is green, it is a demantoid. Okay, for the origin determination, especially Iranian one has uh, sometimes a similar color with the Russian one, so we have to separate it. And uh, if we see the chromium and the iron content, it is totally overlap to each other. But if we see the germanium content, it's a uh, y-axial, the overlap is reduced a little bit, but still, there are a big overlap. So I think checking inclusion may help much better. Okay, let me summarize my presentation. Uh, what I want to say is uh, Demantoid Garnet has a very dramatic, in interesting history. I hope you feel like so. And uh, hostile inclusion can be seen in all serpentinic related origins.
but they look so different little bit. So it can be the good indications of origin. And uh, here's the reference and acknowledgement. Thank you very much for your attention and please stay safe. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Fruya. It's a very nice presentation with the wonderful inclusion photos and the photos of the gemstones. Do you have the color chart of the Dementoid? Yeah, yes, uh, one of my slides there is, uh, yeah, this is a color scale from, it is given by the Russian dealer. Do, do they see this right now? Yeah, okay, thank you. And, uh, yes, you can see. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. And, uh, actually, there is no standard for the Russian Demantoid. It depends on the dealers. And some dealers say there is a five scale, and some people say there is a 11 scale, and some dealers say the 40, more than 40 scale. But uh, yeah, actually, as we see it here, the, if the stone is, has a more strong green color, it is a good quality, they think. Yeah, exactly. It's very nice. So thank you very much. Maybe now we can go back to the question and answer session. Maybe yes. you can take a look about the question. Okay. And remember to read the question first because we can share the question with all the attendees. Yes. Okay, thank you very much for the many questions. Let me check it first. You can find the question, right? Yes, yes, I see, but it's very really long and a lot. So. Okay, <laughs> Sorry, let me have a time, time a little bit more. Yeah, take your time, yeah. You can read, read oh. the questions, yeah, so it's okay, you can, it will help you to know the question also, you can, you have to read out, so the attendees know the questions also. Yes, yeah, uh, let me pick up one question, I have heard from my partners that hostel inclusion is not accepted by customers in Asian countries, what is the reason behind it? Yeah, actually in Japan, uh, hostel inclusion is very appreciated in our country. In our laboratory, we also have a special certificate, a special report with uh, inclusion portal. If the inclusion is beautiful, then even the stone is not so nice, but uh, they can sell it very well. So, yeah, maybe I, I don't know other Asian countries, but in Japan, the, in the most cases, the hostel inclusion is very appreciated. Yeah, thank you very much for your question. And the next one is, uh, okay, are they still mining in your Russia? If so, is there still a lot of uh, garnets coming from those mines? Yes, it is. Uh, when I visited a Russia mine in 2012, at that time, it was a hard time for them they could not get the permission for the large scale mining from the government. But uh, later, I think five or six years ago, they got the permission from the government. So now they start to have a large scale mining and a good production now. So I actually, when I see the Japanese market, the price become a little bit reasonable. Not, the, how can I say, not low as before, but the, uh, like a, 10 years back, it was extremely expensive, but now I think it is a good time for start the demand business. Okay, the next one, is it true that heat treatment of the demantoid garnet cannot be detected even in the lab? Yes, it is. As uh, unfortunately, as I explained, yeah, in most cases, uh, the heating is, uh, done under the very sophisticated uh, system. So the hostel inclusion is not damaged. Then we cannot say it is uh, heated for sure. And that's why in the most case, even if the uh, stone is heated, we cannot detect it. And uh, actually in most case we cannot detect, that's why even if we can detect it, 
uh, it's better not to light it on the lovely port. That is because if uh, we do like that, uh, the dealers uh, got uh, such kind of report as uh, there is no comment about heating, then they think it is uh, not heated. So it is a big problem. So that's why even if we know it is heated, it's better, I think it's better not to light it on the report unless we can identify the heating on uh, all stone. Okay, what is the cause Sorry, of... Sorry, uh, Mr. Fruya, can I interrupt you for a moment? Yes. Uh, and be, um, before there's an uh, attendee, and he wants you to go back to the presentation, 65, it's nice, uh, 65. Okay. Can you go back and check again? So, he wants to see it again. Then, uh, after this, you can stop your presentation, and you can just uh, show your face to all the attendees. Ah, okay. Yes, uh, is this okay? Yes, because just now uh, Thomas uh, he asked to see the presentation to see the slides again. So I think we show them show him already. So now you can stop the screen share and uh, show your face to everyone. So you can read the questions and answer all the questions. Thank you. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, but but let me continue the screen shares for a little bit more. Uh, okay, let me pick up this question. Are all dermatoids small in size? Uh, actually, the largest stone we tested in our laboratory was the sardine calot. It was quite big, but uh, because uh, it, it was a Russian dermatoid and it has a nice uh, hostel inclusion, but because of the very high content of chromium, actually it was too dark. So at uh, the beauty of the gemstone, I prefer up to two carats, three carats, uh, it looks a most beautiful range, I think. So Mr. Fruga, you still have something to share in the presentation, right? Uh, Yes, or, okay, let, let me stop sharing yeah. my desktop. Yeah, yeah, so you okay. can use uh, your questions. What else? Uh, some demonstrate don't have any chromium. Yes. Have you ever seen the demonstrate heating facility? Uh, yeah. Okay, let me pick up this question. Uh, have you ever seen ever demonstrate heating facility? Unfortunately, not. But uh, actually, this heating technique is uh, disclosed by some research, and uh, that's why we could uh, duplicate it in our laboratory. So, yeah, they use an uh, electric furnace, and uh, what is important is uh, reducing heating, heating without uh, oxygen, air, any air. And uh, we put some charcoal around the stone, and uh, we heat it for like two hours, three hours, up to 700 degrees, and uh, it changes the color totally. Okay, and for how long has it been done? Ah, this is okay. Ah, okay, yeah, this is a very good question, and uh, I also still have uh, the question about it. Some demantoid doesn't have any chromium. Then, what is the color origins of them? Yeah, this question is very important. And uh, uh, some people say there is a function like a blue sapphire, uh, iron and titanium intercharge transfer between them. They cause a bluish color in it. And uh, andradite is originally a yellow stone. So when it, they got the bluish tint, the stone become uh, green. That is one explanation. And uh, but actually, when we look at the Namibian stone and the uh, Madagascar stone, always the chromium content is too low. And uh, we also check the vanadium content. It also can cause uh, green in the garnet like a uh, tabulite. 
But uh, for such kind of stone, the vanadium content is also too low. So actually, yeah, uh, I'm sorry that I don't have the answer, clear answer, but uh, uh, not the chromium and not the vanadium and maybe some iron related something can cause a color in uh, such kind of demantoid. Okay, so I think, ah, okay, and uh, I like this question. Uh, for jewelry, what is the best type to buy? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, the deep green demantoid is beautiful as it is, uh, like a high quality emerald. But uh, if the stone has a nice wholesale inclusion in it, and uh, if the customers can see it with uh, his loop, then he can enjoy it again. And uh, such kind of uh, uh, beauty of the stone is, uh, how can I say, it is also uh, like, a, how can I say, inter like a, uh, attract our uh, uh, intellectual, interest. So uh, yeah, I think the good color, the deep green color of the stone is the first one. And the second one is uh, the beautiful hostel inclusion and uh, which should be seen with the loop. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, I think such kind of uh, demantoid is nice for the jewelry too. So, yeah, there are some questions in the chat also. So one attendee and he asked, he yeah. liked the book you showed at the first time, right? Before the presentation. And what is the name of the book? Where, where can they buy the book? Yes. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for your interest. Uh, this is uh, unfortunately a Japanese book. So, and uh, if you live in Japan, uh, yeah, we can ship it to you. But uh, if you, uh, yeah, we try to translate in English. And okay, I'm sorry for that. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. We will be waiting for that for the English version. Yeah, because we all want to take a look. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. So one attendee also asked, uh, did you ever see the color change garlic, uh, Dementoid? Uh, no, but, uh, oh, okay. Excuse me, can we show one other slide? Yeah, you can um, share your presentation again. Can you no. do that? Yes. Yes. And, uh, can you see this uh, slide now? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, you have to click the uh, share ah, screen yes. again. Yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, I found it in a mineral show in Tokyo, and uh, they sell it as a lit demand And <laughs> actually, it is, uh, at most, it is uh, orange. Actually, it is brown. But uh, it, uh, but it has a nice hostel in it, and uh, that's why the dealers call it as a lead demantoid. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's not a nice naming, I think. But anyway, uh, so far I don't see the color change type of the demantoid planet, unfortunately. And uh, some people ask me about the lead demantoid, and. Uh, yeah, actually, when I see it, I was a little bit disappointed. Yes. Okay, any other question? Okay, thank you for your answering. Um, I'm trying to find more questions. Uh, so there are more questions in the question and answer session. You can take a look. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, let me pick up this question. In Japanese jewelry market, the origin of or quality of 
demonstrated is more important. Yeah, unfortunately, the origin report is uh, for the demonstrated is not popular in Japan yet. And uh, people think only the Russian material can have a good quality. And uh, that's why, yeah, they still think much of the uh, quality of the demonstrated, especially the green color. And uh, uh, some um, experienced, uh, or I'd say, I don't want to say maniac, but uh, such kind of customers, they like the host, good wholesale inclusions. So, yeah, still in Japanese market, the quality of the demonstrated, the color is more important. Okay, thank you. There are one friend that like, uh, uh, will you go to Tucson Fair? Because uh, he would like to meet you in Tucson. Ah, uh, yes. Every year I go to Tucson. So, and uh, I always around the AGTA show, uh, GJX and the AGTA show and some other show around there. So, uh, yeah, please send me an email. Uh, yeah, let's meet there. And yeah. uh, I want you to have our gem talks. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay, thank you very much. So tomorrow I'm going to send your email address to... Ah. To the attendees, it's okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you Thank very much. For you. Yeah. yeah for you. <laughs> especially someone who wanted to join the tour for the Ural mine to see the Demantoid mine, the Emerald mine, Alexandroid mine. Yeah. Please send me an email to me, and I will forward it to you. Okay. Uh, okay. What kind of notification do you use yeah. for the photos? Uh, mostly, it's about twenty to forty power. Yeah, and what is important to take the hosting inclusion photo is a, a fiber optic light. We need a very strong light from the one direction. Then we can see the uh, hostel easily and uh, we can take a good photos with it. Okay, what else? Uh, I'd like to see Italian Demantoid uh, in the Tucson show, there is one dealer who always have it. Yeah. Yeah. If you send me the email, I will reply to you. Okay. So one um, attendee, he asked like, uh, what, is, what are the weakness of the stone? Do they, the color will fade by time or not? Uh, no, it is very stable. And the uh, only problem with uh, Demantoid Garnet is the uh, hardness is uh, 6.5. It's not super strong. So sometimes uh, when it is set on the jewelries, it can be scratched with uh, other diamond. Then sometimes I see the uh, scratch on the table face of the Demantoid. So yeah, actually Ling is okay, but uh, Maybe the pendant or some other style of jewelry is better for the demantoid. It's not a super hard stone. Yeah, okay. but the color is stable, very stable. Yeah. Thank you. There are one more question. Like uh, maybe you can talk to him later because yeah. uh, he bought a demantoid and yes. with GI certified certifi certificate, it mm -hmm. has color change. Oh, wow. Oh my God. I want to see it. <laughs> yeah. I would love to. Yeah, I see. So, any, um, any, any more questions? So, one also asked about the highest price for the mentor garnet. You know, maybe reach the Christian, Christians or other auctions price. Oh my God, I'm sorry, I don't check it, but uh, yeah. Recently, the production of Demantoid was uh, limited and uh, it was very low, so the, the price goes up a lot. So, uh, yeah, recently, like this uh, two, three years, it started to decrease a little bit. But when we look at the five years uh, ago, when we look at some auction in five years ago, it should be very high. Yeah, so yeah, I don't check the price. Yeah, I understand. Maybe uh, he wants to ask you uh, what uh, what is the highest price you have been um, in, encountered in. Maybe you have 
asked and have been offered by some dealers the highest price. Oh my God. Uh, it's okay. I, the... I think you focus on the academic uh, research. <laughs> so it's not your area. I, I do understand. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, mm, so, uh, I'm sorry. I'm not so familiar with your uh, flies now. I yeah, I understand. Uh, maybe I suggest uh, this attendee. Maybe uh, he can check later in the Christine's website. Maybe mm. there are some, yeah, some price there, and uh, he can check there because you, your area is in the dementoid research, not in the price. Mm. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. Okay, everyone understand it. Yeah. Wow. So I think uh, that's all the almost all the questions. Why? Yes, uh, yes, I think so. Oh, oh my well, God. Thank you very much for the many questions. It's very <laughs> interesting to read it. <laughs> yeah, I saw um, there's one question he asked a lot of times about the, what is the reason of the hostel inclusion? High pressure or what else? Uh, actually, it is a mixture of the uh, host rock of serpentine. And uh, yeah, that is why the hostel inclusion can be seen in a dementoid. And uh, yeah, as we see, the dementoid is, comes with a, a kind of asbestos, a fibrous uh, mineral. And uh, if this host rock is included in the crystal, then we didn't have the host cell inclusion. Yeah, okay. exactly. That's really good, exact answer, yeah. So I think uh, this attendee will be clear about the hostel inclusion. So um, no more questions now, right? So yeah, yeah one maybe uh, they really enjoy your presentation. They ask, uh, uh, when is your next lecture? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Yeah, I'm sorry for my bad English. <laughs> okay. I think everyone understands it. Yeah, and we really learned a lot from you, yeah. Yeah, you were very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, telling, I'm telling the truth. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I think uh, that's all for tonight. Yeah, okay. I think thank you very much. In Japan also, right? Thank you so much, Mr. Fru, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you okay. all. Yeah, please stay safe. Bye-bye. Yeah, stay safe. Bye bye. See you next time. Yeah, uh, so next by the way, time. I forgot to announce we, our next oh. webinar. Oh uh, yes. Please. Yeah, our next webinar is with Dr. Emmanuel, and he is a physics professor, mm -hmm. and he's going to give a topic about the fluorescence on gemstones. So if you are interested, please uh, focus on our Facebook and WeChat. We will post our uh, registration link there. So thank you very much, and see you next time. So yeah, our colleague already. Um, show the registration link in the chat group. You can register there. And don't worry, we will post it in our Facebook website and uh, other social medias. So please join us next week. See you next time. And thank you again very much for Mr. Fruya. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye, bye-bye, see you, bye-bye. <laughs>